just want to say real quick here, um, I have a, a sinking feeling that Florida, Mobile, um, all the coastal areas, any time now, that's going to be hit where there's going to be a lot of flooding and um, it's all going to go under here pretty soon. Um, the reason why I feel that is because uh, I've been, my business was targeted. I used to have a business called Golf Bay Painting in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, you can check out my business. My license number was uh, C9665. I got them in 2001 when the Twin Towers were attacked. But uh, when I broke up that drug deal in front of my shop, um, business was bad. Ever since the Twin Towers got hit, every year got worse than the year before. And then when the housing market crashed in 2008, there's a lot of stuff behind all this, okay? And the Illuminati, they're all part of this, which it's a cult, the devil's cult. This is all, you know, you read your Holy Bible, all your answers are right here. But, you, I mean, if you look and you see what's happening, you know, because the Bible says, you know, man, what will he give, forfeit his soul for what? You know, and look at what they do, you know. It's like uh, Bush, he was a puppet. You know, all these people wanting to be presidents, wanting to be somebody, you know, a star, football star, rock singer. Um, their names, their music, it's got a lot to do with what's, what, what was coming, what's here today. Um, it's like that band called Cheap Trick. If you notice, even their floors, their album cover. I've been to his house, um, and uh, he lives just outside of Clearwater, Florida. He's got the checkered floors, black and white floors, man. Uh, there's a thing on a, a film about the uh, the pet goat, too, on here with Bush wearing a dunce hat. And then Obama comes into the picture. Um, and then if you listen to the woman in the classroom when she's talking about the uh, uh, plane, having the kids speak these words and then saying them slowly, must hit, steal, you know, and then the guy comes in and tells him, yeah, hey, some planes just hit the Twin Towers, you know, that's what that's about, and then you look in the billboard sign, or the uh, chalkboard thing up there, they got a picture of uh, a, a guy's penis ejaculating, um, I mean, it's all on there, you know, you can check it out, you know, but uh, basically, what this is, you know, you don't, there's a lot of uh, hidden agendas in their messages, what they're doing. That's what the devil does. But basically, if you just read the Word of God, man, Revelations, everything that's in there. Even Hollywood, that movie uh, where it shows the end times, where they're fighting, the world gets together fighting against Armageddon or whatever. Um, America's not even going to be in it. And you got to remember, Hollywood, television, they make a lot of these things up. So, um, they're not going to tell you the truth, what's going on. King James Version, Red Letter Edition, it does, it tells you the truth, but you got to know what to look for in here too. You got to really be in the Word of God, man, searching it daily. You can't just go once every Sunday and then listen to what your pastor is telling you, because they've been tickling ears for a long time, man. They've been uh, all about getting money, building bigger churches, telling people what they wanted to hear. That's kind of like my competitors in my business, painting contractors, telling people what they wanted to hear just to get the jobs. You know, their prices would be cheaper, but their work would be a lot cheaper too. They were in and out fast. They made real good money. And people thought I was more expensive, but truth be known, I was trying hard to hang in there. Even though I seemed ex more expensive, I took a lot longer to do the job. And I spent more money on the prepping stuff and... Um, you know, I guaranteed my work for 20 years where they guaranteed theirs for 12 months, you know. But that's what it's come down to, people telling you what you want to hear. And, uh, you know, and that includes your churches, you know. And see, you, you basically, that's why the Bible says, what will a person do for their soul, you know? What, you know, what lengths they'll go to. And they don't even know it. You know, and you got a lot of people out there saying, uh, well, just everybody else is doing it. Just do what everybody else is doing. If you've ever heard those words, somebody telling you to do it because everybody else is doing it, stop. 
I mean stop. That's what I had to do. I mean, I'm living in my truck today. You know, I, I walked you near know where Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. Uh, that's exactly what I did. I was offered a job at Tampa Bay Lightning Stadium. Uh, it was bad, you know. It was bad. I, I walked away from it. I didn't want nothing to do with it. People are playing games, going to games like nothing's going on. They don't see what's going on. And they're all following that circle. They showed a cell phone where uh, they put it on a pile of ants. See, television will show you what's going on. And that's the way the devil is. He'll give you a glimpse of what's happening. And then most people, they just go, huh, that's weird. You know, when really they should be asking some questions about this shit. Like they took a cell phone. They put it on uh, an ant hill. Ants were crawling all over it. They had it on the news. Then somebody called that phone. And as soon as that phone picked up and answered, the ants all got off of it and started walking around a circle around the phone. Now, if they can get ants to do that, now just stop and think, you got these things to your ear. And a lot of this food people have been eating, let me tell you, they put iron in it. There's literally pieces of iron in it, little bits and pieces of it. But eventually, you got to figure, after years and years and years of eating this stuff, remember what it says about iron and clay? In the Bible, being mixed together, and uh, yeah, people make choices, bad choices. You know, I call it stinking thinking. You know, this homosexual lifestyle. You know, you can't just look at that. There's, we wouldn't have that had we, those. Everything we did were like stepping stones that led to where we are today. You know, and I call it all. It's stinking thinking. That's what it is. I had to apply that to my life. And look at the things I was doing. I couldn't just look at what everybody else was doing. I had to look at what I was doing. And apply that stinking thinking to it. Was it right? You know? Not if everybody else is doing it, just do it. No. Uh-uh. You know? But uh, that's pretty much what happened. This is where we're at. Things are going to come to an end here very soon. I've been having a lot of visions where um, this is soon going to be over. There's not much more time. Like that company trying to get me to go back to Mobile, real bad. You know, it's a small painting company. But see, I've been kind of blacklisted. Ever since I broke up that drug deal, people were, you know, they got like 200 pounds of cocaine. And it was a big thing. But it didn't really make the news or nothing. It was all kind of hush-hush because there was undercover agents involved in it. And um, it was like cartel. And I think these people were from Russia. But, uh, I mean, I just thought these were people sneaking around in front of my shop, man. I turned down my light at 3.30 in the morning, man, and I busted out there. I was mad because I seen them sneaking around in the dark, and I don't like that. And I told them to get into the light where I can see you. And, uh, <clears throat> man, everybody listened to me, to the detail. Then there was more people hid in the side of the building that I didn't even see. Um, but anyhow, uh. After that, a lot of wealthy people were coming around me, you know, and uh, they started saying, hey, we can build your business back up, you know. First, they were asking me, weren't you afraid? A lot of questions about me. And then some people were, uh, some lady flew down from Chicago to have me paint the outside of her house, and uh, she's going, well, let me come down and come and get you. I have a house down there. I can let you paint that, you know, and she's talking to me about my life and all that, wanting to know about me. I used to deep sea fish, too. And uh, I got a lot of stories behind my life, but it's all the Lord. The Lord did stuff that was just phenomenal, man. One time when I was out there swimming in the water, there's three of us. And uh, we had one guy on deck, plus the captain was up on the top watching the radar screen for what's in the waters and stuff. And we were a good ways from the boat we were on. We, I, I worked on a long line. And uh, we'd set out like 20 miles of gear every day and then pick it up in the evening. But anyhow, the guy started yelling, get out of the water, get out of the water. And uh, the other guy, two guys I was with, <laughs> they swam really fast for the boat. I had a mask. I mean, because the salt water, you could see it was like beautifully clear, man, like looking into a blue sky. Beautiful. That's what it looked like. And... Uh, but I still wore a mask because the salt would kind of burn your eyes. And you could see a lot further. 
um, with the mask on. So I put my mask on and I went, I dove down deep because I wanted to look around me real good and plus look down underneath me everywhere. And uh, I wanted to see what it was he was talking about. And then by the time I came back out of the water, I didn't see nothing, man. Everything looked fine to me. I didn't see nothing around me. And I looked at the other guy. Those other guys were already getting out of the boat. And uh, the other guy was going like this, pointing straight down, you know. And I put my mask back on, and I looked down. I seen a bunch of little specks, like little, like if you took some pepper and shook it out on the floor. You know, that's what it looked like on a blue sky, you know, if you put little brown specks on there. And then, after a few seconds, they multiplied, you know, from 12 to 24, from 24 to 64. And then that water started turning kind of black looking. <laughs> and it just kept getting wider and wider, like, like turning like night dark. And I'm swimming for the boat now, you know, because I knew something was coming up and a lot of it fast. And uh, it just kept getting blacker and blacker underneath me from being perfectly light blue to like that. But anyhow, uh, I get out of the water. Right after I got out of the water, I'm going to say within a minute or so, uh, the water just started splashing violently all around us, you know, as far as I could see around the boat. I mean, that's how much came up. And what it was, it was yellowfin tuna. It was a school of tuna fish that came up out of the water, man. And they were just, like, going nuts. And we sat there with poles, man, just dropping hooks. No bait or nothing, man. Just slapping them on our deck. And the captain called in some other boats to come in. Um, and, you know, we sat there all day, man, just catching lots and lots of tuna, man. I mean, it, it wore you out, man. I think that's why how I... Uh, um, tore my stomach on my umbilical cord because man those things are huge I mean huge I had to everyone as we were getting them on the deck it got to the point where I was just straddling them and I had to break their spine you know because so they wouldn't bounce around and because the meat was real tender and soft so I had to break their spine and bleed them um, while we had them on the deck and then we I had to as John was uh, gutting them and stuff like that See, all that stuff was going over the side. They were just stay, feeding on every, you know, on themselves, basically. And uh, we had our decks full. So did the other boats were busy. I mean, we were going like nuts. And the captain, boy, he wouldn't let you take a break for nothing. He used to be an instructor for uh, um, Vietnam. He used to teach people over in Vietnam self-defense or whatever. But uh, anyhow... Um, that was one of my experiences out there. But anyhow, you know, those people wanting to write a story about my life. And I told them, you know, I spoke a lot about Jesus Christ on everything. Even that, you know, because uh, everything I did my whole life was based around the Lord. Because I, you know, when I look at things, how everything happened. Um, but they told me, they said, you know, Mark, we could, we could uh, turn your life around a lot and get a book written and stuff about your life. But we can't, you got to talk less about Jesus, you know. And I looked at him and I said, that ain't going to happen, man. I said, Jesus Christ, man, it's my Lord and Savior, man. I, I fully trust the Lord because everything I've seen, even though my life, see how my, my clothes, they got affliction on them? Even though things were bad in my life, I chose, it made me realize how real he was, Jesus Christ. Because everything that's happening today is based on what that Bible says. The things people will start doing. And, uh, man, it's evident what they're doing. And then when those people said if I spoke less, that was Antichrist. That made me even realize how much more we needed to start speaking up. And uh, a lot of people would say, you know what, religion and politics don't belong on the job. But how many people do you hear speaking about politics on the job? Who's going to be the next president? Who's going to save him? All these people are puppets, man. The Bible says the money, the root of all evil is money. You know, look at what people do for it. I mean, even my ex-wife, man, every day when I first got married, she used me. I know she did. And uh, I fixed up her whole house, man, everything, inside and out, brand new roof, new windows, new everything. 
cabinets, everything. Um, I mean, it was just unbelievable the work that I put into that house over the five years doing it. But anyhow, um, every day she'd come over there. When we first got married, she maxed as much as she could save in her 401. And uh, every day she kept coming out there to me. Look at how much we got now. Look at how much we got now. And then something told me, you know, uh, that's when I started having, like, the gift of sight. And something told me um, I didn't want to see it no more because I knew um, that this was all a bad situation. And... Uh, and I just told her, I said, Maggie, I said, don't show it to me anymore. I said, I just don't want to see it, you know. And uh, it was like within a year later we ended up getting a divorce. I caught her with that police officer. I mentioned all this stuff, man. Um, I kept seeing 1221 on my Chuck radio. And then it, uh, uh, three months after I signed my divorce papers, man, well, I seen in Tarpon Springs where the Greeks stole that cross. I seen uh, where uh, uh, a black image come up out of the water there, right at the docks that morning when he th when they threw two crosses, and they couldn't the kids couldn't find the one until that second one was thrown, and then uh, you know they both came up at the same time with one in their hand. That's never happened, man. Check it out, man. That's always been on the news every year they do it, man. It's something that's known probably all over the world. And they've never had that happen. But that was the morning I seen that black image come out of the water with that Spanish sombrero hat. And uh, my life, ever since then, you know, it really got worse. I mean, I got blacklisted, man, where nobody would call me. It was hard for me to get work. And... Uh, it's like that company. Nobody would hire me. I had one job. I started one day, and I got fired like within an hour and a half. I just started cutting in. I was cutting in a little bit, and the guy's going, I thought you were fast. And I'm going, man, I said, I am fast. I said, but you can't have a roller standing behind one guy cutting in when there's a lot to cut in. These guys weren't even pulling the plate covers. Nothing, man. They were too big of a hurry. Everything they were doing. But anyhow, the other guy wanted me to go to work for him. This guy, you know, all of a sudden I'm fast with this guy. And uh, he's wanting me to come back now. Offered me uh, 16 an hour from 13 to 16. And then said if I run a crew, he'll give me 18. But see, that's back in Mobile. And I just left after one week's paycheck. Something told me to get out of there. And uh, just like I didn't want to see my ex-wife's 401 anymore. Something told me to get out of there, and I think something's getting ready to happen there. That's why I left. And, there, and him, him trying to get me to go back, uh-uh. You know how David Bowie died at the age of 69? Look at this. These, this is these Murphy gas stations from Walmart. See the 69? Notice how if you flip it upside down, twist it, it looks the same no matter what. Well, David Bowie was into that black star in that house that I was working at, where these people wanted me to come back and do work for them, they had a black star out on their deck. They wanted me to, I painted it black, but I did the deck, but for some reason it looked like a bunch of footprints kept coming up out of it. And I reprimed it, tried to paint it, and the same thing, man. And I'm going, man, this is like, I, I, I had bad feelings about this, and I just, I left. And then they're trying to get real hard to get me back there. And, uh, I left, and I came down here, and I'm now I'm in a town called Irondale, Alabama. Now, if you notice where it says in the end of the Bible, iron and clay will be mixed. There's a lot of stuff getting ready to happen, man. I'm in some real, real, it's going to get wickety-wickety. But I've had visions of raptures, you know, like the big, thick vines with all the fruits and stuff all on it, you know. It was all ready for harvest and that I'd seen, but this was huge, man. They were huge, like giants for giants. And uh, you know how they talk about the, the, the big doors open in heaven that no man can shut? That's us, man. We're getting ready to go. That lake was empty. And then a week before that, when I was in uh, Mobile, I had a dream about taking off my glove, and I seen light coming out of my fingertips. And that's saying it's right at our fingertips right now. My whole hand turned transparent like like. Uh, the spirit, and uh, I believe we're at that time. We're getting ready to go. I'm 
very serious, man. I feel it. I know it's getting ready to happen. I showed people that picture of that angel with the trumpet over my head. Um, man, we're there. I've got videos there where I've got it up. I'm, I was going to pull it and show it again, but we're there. It's that important, man. Uh, I'm getting ready to probably pull off to a, uh, a rest area on, a, on the side of the highway. Probably stay there for a couple of days because I, I can't stay in one spot too long. I might stay here for another two days and then I'm going to go park off over there for a while. Um, I've been trying, you know, c looking for work, but ain't nobody hiring over here right now. Craigslist, that's about how I've been checking. Uh, there ain't much going on. It's Everything's pretty slow. I think we're getting ready to go. I think we're at the end. Um, you got to be careful, too, with the media. A lot of people, man, they got demons in them. When the Pope came to Washington last September in his own name, I think we got a lot of people that got demons in them because remember what Jesus said father will turn against son and mother against daughter and you know like everybody's going to come against each other if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you then that means a demon spirit can get into you and they're going to turn each other against each other you know people are going to be very hateful violent um, like that black rain's been reported in Michigan and then people up there in Michigan just killed six people uh, all the sharks on the Florida coast, tens of thousands of them just last week. A lot of stuff's been happening, man. It's going to happen anytime, man. Trust me, you know. I got, I got these sights and visions. You know, when I say I'm looking for some work and stuff like that, that's, I got to work, you know what I mean, just to have make a little bit of money. I've got a little bit right now, but, uh, you know, I ain't looking to... to rent anything or anything because I know this is going to be over I mean if I could rent a motel weekly that would be nice you know where I can shower every day um, I mean they're generally about 200 bucks a week 240 around there you know but I'm not looking at living in a house because uh, I know time's over man we're going to be raptured pretty soon I've been buying a lot of uh, food that don't require refrigeration stuff like these tuna packets you know, I can make a sandwich out of them. See how it says yellow fin? Mm, this stuff's good too, man. It tastes real good. I make sandwiches out of it. You, crackers will store longer than bread. But a lot of this stuff, I figure what I got in my truck, if I end up being raptured, taken, then uh, hopefully somebody will find this food because it'll last back here. It doesn't require refrigeration. Um, it's not going to last for as long as they need it, you know. I won't have that much food, but... Um, cause it's going to be about two years, but America is going to be destroyed by nukes and it's going to be destroyed when it, when the earth splits and stuff, but up all the way to the great lakes, it's going to be a lot of destruction happening. A lot of people are going to be dying, man, like New York, uh, floods and all that stuff. It's going to be bad. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're, they don't, they're not going to see it coming. You know, sadly they won't see it coming. That's because they're too much into this world. And remember what Jesus Christ said. Those that try to save their life. Even if you get the mark of the beast man. America's not going to be around a couple of years. You'll end up losing your soul. And people. You know if you're left behind. I wouldn't be afraid of being decapitated. Because you'll immediately. You'll be with Christ. Immediately. For eternity. Those that take the mark of the beast. Worship the beast. Um. They're going to die within a couple of years anyhow of nukes. This is all about souls. Remember in the Holy Bible in the end it says no flesh would have survived had Jesus not came back sooner. That's why it says in the end those that are alive and remain will be caught up with those um, that are resurrected. I believe there's going to be two raptures. There's going to be the first one for the bride of Christ and then he's going to come back after the wedding and those that are alive and remain will be caught up with the dead. You know, that's what I believe is going to happen. You know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It don't matter. But I know I'm out of here either way. You know, I know the rapture's at hand. Like the, like the other night where I had that on the vine. Where uh, um, I seen the lake was empty. In other words, you know, but water was dripping off of everything. Like it was all fresh, ready to go, you know. God bless, man. These are true dreams, too, man. Trust me, man. This is really getting ready to happen.